they say of the church, Reverend Sheffield, blame it on my head and not my heart. So we won't take it personal, but it's an opportunity to really engage the dialogue as we move forward. Let me be clear as well as I sit and move around a little bit because of my name. I'm also on just a little bit of medication, so you can blame mine on my medication if you like to. <laughs> this week, when I was asked uh, a couple of weeks ago to uh, co-moderate this panel, I posed this question on Wednesday to 1.5 million people on my Facebook. There were more than 700 people that responded. More than, we normally get about two to 300 phone calls on conversations each day. I think when we talk about a day the new black, the question specifically for the African American community as we move forward, I think it's a great place on the back end to turn this discussion into the civil rights movement in terms of human rights and civil rights. And I had gay, straight, lesbian, transgender who called this week and I think it's to Dr. Shamad's point, which is how do you have a movement when the moral question, specifically for African Americans, is still an issue and still a question? Has the black community first accepted the moral question before talking about the civil rights question, and then is gay the new black standing on the shoulders of the African American civil rights movement? So I, I guess I'll start with, because I saw both um, Bernadette and Sharon cringing at the end of the table. So the question that becomes is, has the black community embraced the moral issue? And some of us are not going to be politically correct, and I might be one of them. In terms of lifestyle, because there are folks who are gay who say, it's not a lifestyle, it's my way of life. So some of us may be in, you know, politically incorrect. But for the LBGT community, what is your perspective on the black community's moral acceptance of this community before talking about you can pattern the gay civil rights movement or the gay rights movement with the civil rights movement of African Americans in the 50s and 60s? Is there an acceptance I, or not? I, 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 I'd like to address it. If you've got silence there, I do. No, and if we can be specific and just move forward, because we're going to get the audience involved in the discussion as well. Go right ahead. I think you've hit it on the head when you make, you ask the question about um, the morality of the issue. I think that is the only reason that the African American community overall um, rejects the use of the civil rights movement as a comparison. Because when you think of where we got out, where Dr. King you know, went to Gandhi and looked at the nonviolence experience there. And when you look at Latinos and the immigration fight, you know, Reverend Anthony made reference to it, what's going on now. Everyone has civil rights, little c, little r. The comparison of big C, big R, big M is our own way of holding on to what we believe is ours, but I think it's because of the morality issue. Beyond that, the LGBT movement, the women's rights movement, the Latino immigration movement, it's all based on people's civil rights. And it's based on, on human rights. I just want to say, this is an issue of equality. That's what this is about. And I, I think uh, Terry and maybe Curtis alluded to this earlier. The issue of marriage is something that, that's very different. When you talk to most African Americans who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, we want to be able to work and not lose our jobs because we're gay or lesbian. We want to be able to live somewhere and not be kicked out because we're LGBT. And in the state of Michigan, that can happen. A lot of people assume, how many people in here right now think that we're protected under the Elliott Larson Civil Rights Act? None. We can lose our jobs for being gay. And a lot of people in our community, in the, so now i got to say the LGBT community, because you know I can't separate, okay, black, sometimes I'm just black, sometimes I'm gay, sometimes I'm a woman, but in the LGBT community there are people who think, because we provide victim services, they're triangle, and they call us and say, I got fired because I'm gay. I want to sue them. And we have to say, I'm so sorry. And that is disgraceful. You know, we live in a country that's supposed to be based on equality and fairness. And if we are going to work, if we are doing our jobs, we should not have to worry about that. If we have children that we have to provide for, and I'll tell you a story, because I'm a single mom, and I was living in New York City my entire adult life. As, as the Reverend mentioned earlier, I was in Boston and New York, and a year and a half ago, I decided I wanted to come home, because I'm from Detroit, I'm from the east side of Detroit. Anybody from the east side? <laughs> <laughs> 
And I wanted to come home, and for the first time in my life, I had to stop. And I had to ask myself, wait a minute, where am I going to work? Because Michigan doesn't have any of these protections. Well, I have to go into the closet? But why did your sexuality become, uh, two questions, and, and I want to keep moving, and Angela, just let me know when you want to step in, and I said to, to people, because as a heterosexual, this is the interviewer in me, as a heterosexual, my sexual preference is not an issue when I interview for a job. So I wouldn't think, where am I going to work because I'm heterosexual? Where am I going to work because I'm gay unless I'm wearing my sexuality on my forehead to ask that question? Secondly, because it is a political issue, as you mentioned, you know, wanting to the laws in Michigan, how do you then get people to vote, as in Prop 9 in California, to vote for an issue that they morally oppose? How can I morally vote for something? How can I politically vote for something that I morally don't agree with? That's the understanding well, from some of the questions I got yesterday. People may be surprised to hear, and Arkin Foundation just released a report about this, 80% of African Americans support hate crime protection for LGBT people. 70% support job protection. This marriage is a separate issue, and oftentimes people assume that because you're opposed to marriage, even though the majority of African Americans, just like the majority of white people in the state of Michigan, do support some form of relationship recognition, even if it's not marriage. These are different issues. African Americans, by and large, support protections for LGBT people in housing, employment, and even health care, and, and as I said, relationship recognition and hate crimes. Lots of people don't understand that. They, they group these two issues together, and they should not be grouped together. It's an issue of equality, and that's what we want. We want our kids to go to school. We want them to be safe. We should not have 11-year-old boys like Carl Walker in Massachusetts hanging himself because he was caught fag over and over again. All right, Dr. Dr. Shamad, and then Angela, you can take it. Yeah, I don't think anybody disagrees with you on the equality piece with respect to protections of uh, gays, lesbians, bisexual, transgender people in public, okay? Um, and I think that when you really bifurcate the issues, marriage is the institution by which the family unit is built, by which we are all socialized. Most of our opinions, most of our values, most of our mores come out of the family unit, okay? I think that one of the things that assaults the sensibilities of African Americans is the notion that you could compare the gay movement to the black movement and for the very reasons you just suggested where African Americans were discriminated against on site and continue to be discriminated against on site when you see the disparities in wealth and in income 